Nikita Koloff, the Russian nightmare, no, the devil's nightmare here from It's Time to Man Up. Challenging men to step into their true manhood. Your chosen Truth Network podcast is starting in just a few seconds. Enjoy it, share it, but most of all, thank you for listening to the Truth Podcast Network. This is the Truth Network. Coming to you from an entrenched barricade deep in the heart of Central North Carolina. Masculine Journey After Hours. A time to go deeper and be more transparent on the topic covered on this week's broadcast. So sit back and join us on this adventure. The Masculine Journey After Hours starts here now. Welcome to Masculine Journey After Hours. And we're excited today, Harold, aren't we? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm excited because it's your topic. Yep, I stumbled. You stumbled and picked a topic. Is that I, what I, was? I made the mistake of suggesting a topic. Yeah, well, and, uh, well, actually, no, it's not a stumble. The topic is expectations. They can be good, or they can be bad, mm-hmm. but we're going to live up to them. So it's important that we pick the right ones, or whose we pick. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah, because the world's full of them. The world's not 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 slow on expectations. That's for sure. Right. right. There, there's plenty of them out there. Everybody has one. Yeah. And I think old Harold, he just zipper merged right into that topic. This he week. did. Yep. He did. Zipper merge is a term that uh, you guys have developed over over my preference on driving. Uh, <laughs> we didn't come up with the zipper merge. I think merge. the yeah. DOT did. Uh, yeah. And it's <laughs> the preferred way to merge at a construction site. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is, yeah. according to the you yes. know, Department yeah. of Transportation. Yeah, Isn't you, it, Harold? You don't wait till the last moment and act like ants bumping heads. You go, I, ahead, you and, you go ahead and switch lanes three miles ahead of time. Well, that it, way you can maintain your speed. You're saying the government isn't right? Of course, I have, I have the expectation <laughs> that people are going to do it right at the end. So I'm good. <laughs> it's all about expectation. It's all about expectation. Maybe I, you're just living under a bad one. I have a history of picking, <laughs> picking the wrong expectation. Uh, Except in marriage. Yeah, that's oh, true. Oh, yeah. That, that one has worked out really, really well. Yeah. I had high expectations when that little lady came into my life, and boy, have they ever been met. And exceeded. Absolutely. we got 58-plus years. Beautiful. Oh, already. Wow. David, that's way longer than you've been around. Uh, yeah, like by 18 years. Yeah. So. Yeah. A whole adult more than you. Yep. You're, you're <laughs> exactly right. Sam. I'm exactly right. You're exactly right. Well, thank you, David. I appreciate that. All right. So we'll get on to the first clip. I actually have the uh, first clip. And, and when the topic was expectations, this movie obviously came to mind because this person has a fair amount of expectations. And this movie is uh, Christmas Vacation, and it's Clark Griswold, who's the uh, the lead person. And in this clip, you have uh, Clark and his wife, Ellen, and they're kind of sitting in bed, and, and they're talking about the upcoming Christmas and the, who all is going to be there. And Clark's excited. Ellen's not as excited. And let's listen to how it plays out. Did I tell you I talked to my mother today? And? And they've decided they're coming for Christmas, too. You know, it's not too late to change our plans. No, 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 that's great. Say, it's great. I think you're forgetting how difficult it's going to be having everybody in the house at the same time. Honey, they're family. They're not strangers off the street. All they do is argue. Christmas is about resolving differences and seeing through the petty problems of family life. Yeah. And it's about my mother accusing your mother of buying cheap hot dogs and your mother accusing my mother of waxing her upper lip and then they don't speak to Your mother waxes her upper lip? She has for years. (laughs) Doesn't show. I don't know, Sparky. I just have this feeling that it's not going to... I want to have Christmas here in our house. It means a lot to me. All my life I've wanted to have a big family Christmas. It's just that I know how you build things up in your mind, Sparky. You set standards that no family event can ever live up to. What have I ever done that? Parties. Weddings. Anniversaries. Funerals. Ho, 
holidays, vacations, graduation. Well, I didn't set that up very well. If you haven't seen the movie, what's happening there is he's been touching the Christmas tree and so he has sap all over his hands and that's why you keep hearing things. But then again, it's been out like 20 plus years. So if you haven't seen it by now, probably, you know, you might want to watch it next Christmas. But if you have seen it, when you think about that, um, when you think about that show, that, that movie, you think about most of Clark's issues are around his expectations not being, being met, right? Everything that, that gets him so frustrated is because there's not an expectation that's getting met that he had, whether that be the family's getting along, when his, what his bonus should be, his bonus check coming, you know, whatever that is. You know, he lives his life based on his expectations, right? And then everything in life should conform to that. And I'm not picking on Clark Griswold. I think that's most of us. When I'm really honest with myself, I live with my own expectations and, and to some level expect the world to conform to that. You know, it doesn't. <laughs> I can't even get you know, a lot of my family to, you know, it, which is, is not what I should be asking them to do. And that's the point. The point is not having expectations on people that at least haven't been discussed. Right. It's different if you've had a conversation with, with you know, my kids are all grown, they're adults, you know, and I can have adult conversations with them about expectations that I have on certain things. Now, once that expectation's been there and it's agreed upon, well, that's a different story, right? You know, if I don't meet it, then they can be frustrated with that, right? Or if they don't meet it, I can be frustrated with that, you know, that, but that's different once you've come upon and agreed it, but agreed upon it. But most of the time what happens in most relationships and most situations is there's no agreeing upon anything. There's just unset expectations. There, there's undiscussed expectations. You know, one of the things I love to do at work is I got a new community not long ago. And so I got some new um, managers. Uh, we're working with the same companies, right? But I got some new like leaders in the area that comes in from the siding company or from the whatever it is. And so it's someone I haven't worked with before. So one of the first things I do is I invite them out to lunch, right? So we can go talk and have a discussion on what's the expectations here. You know, what's your expectations of me, you know, when you come to the job site, which I know what they are. I mean, I've been in the industry a while. It's job readiness. It's this, it's this, it's this, but I let them tell me what that is so I can make sure that's what it is. And then it gives me the opportunity to set expectations of what I need. And what I found in doing that, once you go have that and you break bread with somebody and you discuss it, the tendency is that people tend to want to try to follow that a lot more, right? Because now it's a known thing. You know, and, and I look back and most of the times that I've been frustrated, it's because I've had an expectation that wasn't met that I didn't tell anyone about, right? It, it's, it's, that's a, a constant source of what will be frustration, undiscussed expectations. So anyway, yeah. that's just my two cents on it that, you know, I try to give you an example. I'll give one more example. Okay. Step away from that is, I've learned, you know, when my boys and I take our trips, we'll take a trip every year, a vacation. Not to really have expectations as much as having hopes. You know, I hope that the weather's good. I hope that this is going to be fine. I hope that, you know, that we won't have an issue with this. But when I have an expectation it's not met, I get mad. When I have a hope that's not met, I can put it in a different category. And I don't know if that makes any sense to anyone other than me, but I can have a lot of hopes for that week. You know, and I pray a lot. God, I pray that these hopes come through. And a lot of times they do, or a lot of times it replaces it with something else. But I don't have expectations on the kids, or I don't have expectations of time frames. You know, other than, other than the fact, unless we have a game to go to or something we have to be at at a certain time, we get there when we get there. You know, and that lack of expectation is very freeing and actually very healthy. At least, anyway. Robbie? We believe you, Sparky. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. We appreciate that. So, Rodney, you have a, a, a clip you haven't used in a while from a movie. I mean, you haven't used in a while. It's been quite a while since you've used this movie. Yeah, I'm back in the saddle again. You are. Yeah. You are. The Outlaw of Josie Wales, man. Like you said earlier, <clears throat> how could one not think of this clip? When you think of the expectations. I, I mean, isn't the first one that come to your mind? Mm -hmm. Andy, what are you over laughing about? Huh? He's still Come thinking on, about no. King David. <laughs> was that actually said? I don't think I remember hearing you say that. Did you actually say that? I, I'm, you weren't listening. I think I did. Well, that's because that's. Uh, you said obviously. I'm not to what you're saying. You said yeah. obviously. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. yeah, I did. Yeah. Obviously, you think of this clip. I, obviously, yeah. I did. Yeah. So, what you have here is <clears throat> the outlaw Josie Wales is on the run now. They have 
you know, they, they went to shoot all of his buddies and he escaped with the one uh, guy that got shot in the back and they're on their way to go cross the, the river and they're running and they had already ducked one time and a bunch of soldiers passed them and they're you know, here and there about two hours ahead of them. So they're coming up to this uh, crossing and Granny Hawkins has an expectation. So let's take a listen. Howdy. Howdy there. Sim Carstairs is the name, uh, Mr. We might give you a bit of ferry in business. Oh, pleasure. You know, Bill Quantrill used this ferry all the time. A good friend of mine. What do you got over there? Oh, just the store with Granny Hawkins up there. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll just all amble over to that store. Of course, him and me will ride because we get a touch of the cramp. Stranger, you're in luck. I just happen to have the perfect thing here for cramp. We'll need a half a side of bacon, 10 pounds of beef jerky, 20 pounds of horse grain. And when we get over there, there won't be any need for you to go inside. You can just talk through the door to old granny, tell her we need a lot of clean bandages and boil poultice for a bullet wound in a hurry. Come on. So you'll be Josie Wales. How might you know that, Granny? Soldiers were here looking for you about two hours ago. I was going to mention that to you as soon as I got the chance. They say you killed your own men. You lying blue scumbellies. They say you're a hard foot and desperate man, Josie Wales. They're going to heal and hide you to a barn door. You know what I say? What's that? I say that big talk's worth doodly squat. Now, them poultices are laced with feather moss and mustard root. Mind you drop water on them occasionally and keep them down. It's obliged, Granny. You can pay me when you see me again, Josie Wells. I reckon so. I reckon so. Yeah, I'm waiting on your explanation. All right. Let's, <laughs> let's see if I can <clears throat> pull one out, right? Yeah, no, no. I know you've got this. <clears throat> Yeah, sorry about the throat. Um, That's all right. So what you have here is Josie Wales is showing up, and Granny Hawkins hasn't seen him, doesn't know who he is, but has this expectation that he's coming. And that's where we have an expectation of who's coming and a second coming, that's Jesus Christ. And so what you have here is Granny knows because of others that have went before him and talked about him so she could recognize him by what others said. And that's what we have to do is go out and talk to others about Christ and so that they can expect him and know when he comes and know who he is and actually live with him now even before he comes but those things right there are setting expectations like we talked about there's so many ways to set really poor expectations that can drive you to a place where I take no action and the gospel is all about driving to action that's positive that's talking about the second coming of Christ and what he's already done for you in his first coming and when you that's where I love this clip so You've got, you know, Josie won't even say who he is to the first guy, right? Because he knows that mm -hmm. guy's already lying to him. He's like, he can see that that liar's going to be cast in the lake of fire kind of thing. Where it's like, man, you're trying to blow smoke up, you know, over here to say, I'm really good. I'm a, the Bill Contrail, that guy, whoever his name is, that was a guy who was a part of his gang back when they were fighting in the war. And he's just trying to say, I'm your friend. And then he's actually, you know, trying to sing, you know, Southern songs and all this stuff. But boy, he flips side as soon as the union shows up behind him because he's got enemies in front and enemies behind. Same as what we have as Christians always, that enemy's always there and always around us. So it's that constant, what do you expect? Well, like, we, like I talked about last week, you expect tribulation. That always leads into that hope. And the hope does not disappoint when you put hope in Christ. And that... I just love the way, like, week to week sometimes the things just kind of flow. You know, even though I don't have a specific expectation, they come, to, they come to life over time, right? And you just, over a while, you just kind of expect to really understand more and more and connect things that you've never connected before within Christ, within the Bible. And that's what I love about listening to Robbie always explain, you know, what he's got the next connection on whatever book he's into because it's always something that's going to grow us and basically stretch us in a very good direction towards understanding Christ better. So you're the one. You're still the one. <laughs>
<laughs> Robbie, you actually have our next clip. And last. Yeah, well, I wouldn't even say that. It was next. I, oh, okay. Yeah, it just it's may happen good. to be the last one. It's all good. So yeah. we've used this clip on numerous occasions, yeah. but I couldn't help but think that, you know, I was just thinking about expectations. That usually my expectation if I get up every morning is everything's good. I mean, you know, everything's fine. It's it's gonna be a good day. You know, I have that expectation. But but sometimes disruption comes, right? And and things like, whoa, I didn't see that coming, and I didn't oh, didn't see that coming, and I didn't see that coming. A- and my initial response to that is that idea that actually John Eldridge did a wonderful podcast on the idea that expectations lead or future resentments, which mm-hmm. is talking about what you're talking about with your, and, and interestingly in the book of James, they, they actually speak to your vacation experience mm-hmm. when they say, you know, don't say that tomorrow we're going to do this or that unless it's the Lord's will. Right. And, and so there's the idea of seeing that God's ultimately got the game plan here. Mm-hmm. And, and however, hope is a really good thing and grace is a beautiful thing and faith is an amazing thing. So all those things play into it, but often like Jerry Maguire here, he's an agent at the beginning of this movie and he looks like he's a superstar and he's expecting that he's going to have a great day. And he's talking to a little boy that he thinks he believes that he's going to tell him his dad is a superhero, you know, able to take on anything, but his expectation gets blown away. And as a result, it breaks him out of his pose. Um, And so, Just play the clip. I think it it, it does a good job. And lately, it's getting worse. My agent, my agent. (laughs) Oh, and I've got to play this weekend, Doc. I'm playing 65% of my games. I get a bonus. i got to get the bonus. Okay, Jesse. Take care, little guy. Mr. McGuire. Yeah? This is his fourth concussion. Shouldn't somebody get him to stop? Hey, hey, hey. It would take a tank to stop your dad. It would take... All five Super Trooper VR Warriors to stop your dad. Right? Right? you. <laughs> Who would I become? Just another shark in a suit? Uh, yeah, he was disrupted by a little guy with a beep voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and... You know, I, I wonder if you look back in your own life at, at the points that, that, wow, I did, I, I hadn't realized that I was so under sin that I was not aware of I was in the middle of sin, right? That I didn't realize that God needed to disrupt me totally. And so, you know, this morning Rodney and I were talking about that, that I was studying Nebuchadnezzar. And so, you know, the famous day that he, he woke up and he thought life was good. You know, you know, I'm, I'm going to have a good day ahead of me. I'm the king of the kings and, and, you know, life's great. I'm going to go up here and tell everybody how great I am. The next thing you know, he's out eating grass in the, in the weeds, right? That, that he had, his God that he had worshipped was Murdoch, which was a bull, right? And so God was going to show Nebuchadnezzar this really severe mercy of, oh, you think bulls have got it going on. Let's spend seven years experiencing it together. <laughs> and we're going to little do a heaven on you. You know, things will be good. <laughs> and, and Nebuchadnezzar, you know, he, 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 after seven years, actually figures it out. Well, think about it. He gets disrupted. And then all of a sudden he turns back to God and, and realizes that, wow, there is a God and it's not a bull. Right. It, it, it's, it, it's, you know, and he's, he's got a whole lot going on. Well, I was thinking about, you know, in my own life, what were my Nebuchadnezzar moments? Like if you had the Nebuchadnezzar experience where you woke up eating grass when you thought <laughs> you had this expectation, right? And, and to me, pornography was along a line of those ways. I mean, it tre- tremendously would disrupt my life every time it would come at me. Even, And the next thing I knew, I was Nebuchadnezzar in the grass, right? And, and I didn't see that coming, but here it came, and then I had no control, and there I was, eating grass. And I started to think about how God put certain people, certain things in my life, 
you know, one of the which was if, okay, you want to worship flesh, let me give you lymphoma so you can see what happens when you worship that. It, this will work out good for, you know? In other words, he, he was disrupting me along the way so that I would push into him and I would develop that relationship with him to where at some point in time he could come in and actually talk me through, you know, Robbie, I did pay for this deal. <laughs> You know, I, I really did, you know, and and I really can help you whenever you decide you can't help yourself, you know, like whenever you decide that your 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 bowl is not going to work out for you here, buddy. <laughs> then I'm going to come through for you, and so I think it's really neat that 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 our own expectations are sometimes used as a severe mercy. Mm -hmm. It, it seems negative, but it's completely positive. Yeah, when you go seven years, <laughs> the first four or five, not as fun. But yeah, no, it's uh, definitely, you know, disruptions play into because it, it's tied around our expectations, right? The disruption comes because we have expectations that something's going to be a certain way. And then it's not. And then you end up reeling, not knowing what to do. And, and hopefully you do turn and push into God. Right, which is your best option. But anyway, it's good. Darren, glad to have you with us today. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have you don't have to talk if you don't want to. But it's uh, I had zero expectations of speaking tonight. Well, that's fine. Uh, you know, you we don't, didn't. You, you don't have to, but you can. I don't know what I, Rodney means. I'm, yeah. I'm very. I feel like I just got backhanded compliment you kind of did <laughs> yeah we don't know half the time what rodney means so. yeah you just shake your head and say uh-huh uh -huh. yeah I'm trying, to be, exactly trying to be right. more like jim you know, <laughs> he's, he's, he's got a, yeah i got a ways to go sorry yeah. He, yeah he's got a spreadsheet on it it explains it though i'm, pretty I'm sure, sure he has a yeah spreadsheet so expectations i'm sure a long life have have uh, tripped you up from time to time as well uh regularly yeah, <laughs> yeah. um yeah, literally in the last, uh, I would say, a couple of days ago, my son and I were talking about this exact thing, mm -hmm. um, about his expectations for his staff. He's a pastor of a growing church, and, uh, and my expectations for my customers, my business partners, mm -hmm. my vendors, different things. And uh, he said, Dad, I, you know what? I'm going to try something different. Um, I was listening to this podcast the other day, and it was totally on the subject of get agreement, lose expectations. And so he was like, no, nah, it's really good. You know, you should listen to it. And I was like, okay, great. Well, send me the link to it. Well, you know, the expectation was that I would get the link. <laughs> um, it hasn't happened yet, but... Um, when I get it, I will listen to that though, because it, it has, I mean, just in the last week, mm -hmm. um, had a big, you know, kind of, uh, come to Jesus moment with a really good friend, um, because of my expectation for him and his expectations for me. And, uh, um, they weren't meeting each other's expectations. And so um, we had to sit down and just have a, you know, it's just you know, Monday morning before mm -hmm. we got going, I just said, hey, let's sit down and talk. And, you know, so when you sit down in the barn or the shop or whatever, and you just have a talk with no expectations and then lay things out there with grace and mercy for one another, it's amazing how well the rest of the week goes. Yeah. Yeah, misaligned expectations are, are horrible. You, you see it time and time again. Mm -hmm. You know, um, looking back, just even the arguments I've heard over the last few months of people, you know, not agreeing, it's almost always been misaligned expectations, almost every time, right? Unless someone just didn't do what they said, you know, and there was no missed expectations, just I didn't do it, mm -hmm. you know, which I guess is still a missed expectation technically, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, that plays into it. So communication is key to helping that not happen. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and I always I teach the scientific method as far as how to problem solve and actually build and develop leaders. And it's all around expectation. When you're in a company that just 
basically says one thing, does another. You're, you're, you, everybody talks a good game, but ever never lays anything out. So when something happens, you can go back and go, yeah, that's what we expected. Yeah. <clears throat> but when you write down your expectations, say, this is exactly what I do expect on this occasion. Cause we had like, you can't go five minutes without another expectation and something, but you write it down of what you actually expect. Then you actually go do it and see if you actually get your expectation. A lot of times you don't. And that's where you start to get the learning. And that's when you can start to make adjustments to go, oh, I expect something. Can I get my actual to line up with that expectation? See, so you, you have this expectation that when we date a file. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah. Right? What, is, what is today, Robbie? <laughs> What's it's today's date? It's a four-digit year, not just a two-digit. Uh, two-digit works. Uh, okay. 23. Okay. All right. 0228. You know, you got to love it. And, and, and so I. O two twenty eight. You know, I, one of the things that I've noticed is that that we expect other people to have our gifting. Yeah. And that's one of our expectations is Rodney expects me to be gifted in structure. <laughs> I, I, I would promise you the rest of us don't. Tense. Yeah, that's past yeah. tense. The, the rest of us don't have that expectation. I had that. <laughs> you corrected me, Robbie. I stand corrected. Well, real quick, I want to throw out a, a question there before we we hear the music here in a few few minutes. But uh, uh, about thirty seconds, we'll hear the music. But what expectation does God have of us? Ah, so that's a good one to love each other. To love each other. Well, to obey. Oh, I like that one. What else? Darren, what do you got? To believe what he said about you. Yeah. Right. To believe him first and foremost, right? Above everything else. What else? Love one another. Obey. Believe what he says about you. Believe what he says about others. Love him. Yeah. Love him first. Zipper merge. And zipper merge whenever possible. <laughs> Harold, God's going to be talking to you about that one. <laughs> anyway, go to MasculineJourney.org to register for the upcoming boot camp. And uh, if you want to know more about anything that we talk about, please reach out to us on social media or email us at our first name at MasculineJourney.org. We'll talk with you next week. Have a wonderful week. This is the Truth Network.